How's everybody doing? Good. Looks like the rain kept some people out. Yes. They're, they're doing something. But, uh, I trust y'all had a good week. Everybody had a good week? Yeah. Uh, anything odd happen to anybody? I mean, they happen to me all the time. I mean... ever had one of those weeks when we finally got a refrigerator. We've been two weeks without a refrigerator. I've been, uh, it's been like campus. We had an ice chest in the house. We kept the important stuff there, the coffee cream. <laughs> so, uh, but we finally got a refrigerator and then uh, uh, it was wheel bearing rod. Was wheel bearing, so so it's it's. I gotta go pick up the car because wheel bearing went out. Yeah, you ever, you know, just one of those weeks where, come on, just knock it off. But it's Sunday, and we start a new week, and no better way to start a new week, especially after one where you know things just don't go the way you want them to. This week's new opportunity because uh, God is still on the throne. It doesn't matter what happens. He is there with us. Amen? Amen. So, uh, announcements. What's happening today? Baptism. Baptism. Four o'clock out at the county lake. We invite everybody to come out. And, and, uh, movie and popcorn. Movie and popcorn, yes. Not at the lake, though. <laughs> <laughs> four, four o'clock at the county lake. Come on out and join us for the baptism service. And then at 5.30, you can join us out here and in the sanctuary here. We're going to be watching the movie, I Can Only Imagine. If you've not seen it, you need to be here. It is a great movie telling the story about a great song. Yes, Brenda's got her box of Kleenex right there. Uh, yes, bring your Kleenexes. It is, it, it is a, a, a touching movie, very moving. Uh, and you'll find out, the, kind of, it's kind of nice to understand you know, the backstory on some of those things. And that song, how it came to be, and how his faith grew in the midst of, between writing that song uh, uh, and, and his relationship with his father. And, and it's just a great movie. So you come on out for that. And then over in the Fellowship Hall, we'll have a children's movie. Uh, it'll be either Joseph, King of Dreams, or Moses, Prince of Egypt. One or the other. And there'll be a... What are they called? Veggie Tales? Is that, is that the filler? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a Veggie Tale. I love Veggie Tales. I'm a Larry the... What's... what's Bob the tomato and Larry the cucumber. Yeah, Larry the cucumber. Bob the tomato. I love Larry's voice. If Larry was a preacher, everything that he'd say would be funny. Even if he said, bring ham, uh, that would be funny. I mean, so, doesn't matter what kind of sermon he preached, it would bring joy to your heart. And so, uh, I invite you to come out for that. We'll have popcorn. And we, I, I'll just tell you, we won't have the soft serve ice cream <laughs> just because uh, some of you heard about Mike Carroll and what he's gone through this weekend. So he was our connection there. And we'll do that some other time, I'm sure, when we have an event. But for now, we'll, uh, we'll have popcorn here. And uh, that, that, if we have something else, it'll be a surprise. How's that? So come find out. Um, other announcements. Take it away. I'm just going to send the nursery list around one more time before I make a new schedule. This is a great way if you don't want to teach, like Sunday school or children's church, then you can just be down there with the really little ones. If anybody still locked out of their house from last week, I've got a key that was left on the... On the uh, trailer that's sitting out there, and also a plug for a shotgun. So if anybody wants to lay claim to it, they can. I don't have it with me, but I've got it at the house. Let's 
<laughs> My announcement is more of a reminder or a suggestion that if you text me direct, directly for a prayer request to be sent out on our, on our text uh, prayer list, uh, and you don't see it come out in the next hour or two or three or whatever, you might give me a call. Uh, I don't always check my phone 24-7 uh, if I'm busy I'm doing, or whatever, so uh, you just might make a second contact. Uh, you can, and as far as the initial contacts, you can contact me directly or Pastor Jeff, Wanda, uh, anybody else, and then they'll get it to me as well. So, And if you're not part of that uh, texting tree and you want to be... Uh, who should we contact? Me? <laughs> contact me. Let me know because I'm going to need your, your, your phone number, your cell phone number, so that I can text you uh, with what's going on uh, with our prayer needs. So. Right. Right. And for those that don't text or get text and, and, and want a phone call, we do have a, uh, a continued phone tree as well. So, and that uh, is started, I think, we'll, by Wanda. So if you want to be a part of that ministry, prayer ministry, uh, you can get with Wanda if, if on that part, get with me on the texting part. Okay? Just like to invite anybody who's interested to church choir. We're going to start the Wednesday after Labor Day, so that's another week and a half away. Um, if you've not sung in our choir and are interested, please come. Don't feel intimidated by what you've heard in the past. We're a pretty uh, inclusive group, so just come be included with the rest of us. Please come and, and sing with us. I've played for a lot of choirs in my hundred years. <laughs> but I've never played for one that had more fun. <laughs> and you know what? I hear people say, I can't sing. You know God can bless anything. <laughs> and you can come and share and have fun. They just have a lot of fun, and we don't sing the old Bach and Beethoven songs. We've got those energetic, uplifting songs. And you know, not everybody has the choir director that was voted. Tell me again. Yeah, tell us. South Central Teacher of the Year. South Central Teacher of the Year. I just wanted to bring to your attention again the uh, Together Generation, October 2021. I'm very excited about this. I've been talking with uh, several other churches in Marion. We're trying to get a large group going. Uh, since last time the video didn't work, we'll try it again and introduce it. The need is all around us. Division violence, chaos, and a generation that is turning its back on God. This is the most unchurched and biblically illiterate generation in American history. The statistics tell us that for every four people that are turning their back on the church, we are only converting and reaching one. Something needs to change. People often talk about how bad it is today. But imagine the implications in 10, 20, and 30 years when these young people are leading our nation. We need to reach them, and we need to come together. You see, each generation needs to find its voice, to have its own unique moment in history. In the 1970s, it was a time of war. It was a time of drugs, sex, and rock and roll. But out of that moment, a generation turned to Jesus. And they called themselves the Jesus People. The largest gathering of the Jesus People movement happened in Dallas, Texas. Billy Graham and Bill Bright rallied a generation. And 100,000 young people came together. They were saved, they were equipped, and they were commissioned to go out and change the world. And they did it. In 2016, we prayed and we dreamed. We said, God, would you do it again in our day? Would you renew it in our day? God, a moment for your fame to be manifest in our generation, for us to find our voice. We booked the National Mall in Washington, D.C., and we called the nation to come together. 
hundreds of thousands of young people came from all 50 states. Online, 168 nations streamed this event. It was a global gathering of epic proportions when a generation came and said, we want to follow Jesus. This was never about an event. This is about a movement. This isn't about a moment. This is about a lifestyle. It's about equipping a generation to be disciples who disciple others. Imagine a gathering of a generation coming together right here at Texas Motor Speedway. Hundreds of thousands from across the nation coming to be rallied, to be equipped, to be trained, to go out and disciple the nation and the nations of the earth. The time is now not for an event, but for something that will start a movement that we can train and equip these young people long after the event through resources, through apps, and through collaboration with the local church. We often say the next generation is our future, but they'll only be our future if we make them our present. The need is all around us if we choose to see it, and the time is now, but we can only do this together. If you've never been a part of something like that, I would encourage you to talk to Lucas. Uh, it could be a life-changing event. Um, in 1996, I uh, was able to be a part of uh, the Promise Keepers clergy. And I went to Atlanta, Georgia, and there were clergy from all over the world there. They filled the Georgia Dome, and there were everybody from Catholic priests to uh, Pentecostal preachers and everything in between. And uh, it was a, a movement of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and so I encourage you, to really pray seriously about this. Sometimes we say, oh, I'm busy, or it's going to make up for a long weekend, but it could be life-changing. And uh, and I agree. Um, I, I personally am concerned about our, our future in Christianity. Uh, we need to put not just young people in a position, but some of you may need to be put in a position where you can hear God's call upon your life. Um, the ministry isn't a job. It's called. I'll be honest with you, there have been times when I thought, oh Lord, it would have been much easier if I had just had a job. But the benefits of being part of the call, you don't have to be full-time ministry to be called by God. Some of you may be called in other areas in the local church here to make a difference. So I consider, I, I would ask that you consider prayerfully about being involved in this event. Uh, you got an announcement? I would just add a little something to that. I've been online and watched some of the training that they've done at other uh, events that they've held, and it's really, really good stuff. I know it's promoted for the youth, it's geared to the youth. But it's all about discipling and how to share your faith. And sometimes that's something that doesn't come very natural to a lot of us. So I just feel like there would really be something there for you if you're an adult and interested in going. Good. Also, check out your check out your bulletin. Check the list. Check the events coming up. I think most of them have been touched on already. Um, this youth rally on the 23rd. You want to say anything about that? Is that here at the church? I guess? We're not ready to say anything about that yet. <laughs> Just ignore that. <laughs> How about a cake? Let's talk about cake. This will put meat on your bones. Or take it off. It just depends. Don't take too big of a bite. But anybody have a birthday this week? Oh, 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 oh. look at that.
How about an anniversary? Anybody get married this time a long time ago? Seems like in a galaxy far, far away. No? No one got married? Okay. Do we have, uh, just give me, because I like to, you know, look forward. Anybody have one coming up? October? September? Okay. Good deal. Good deal. All right. Well, we've gotten everything taken care of. A lot of announcements this morning. A lot of things happening, but that's okay. Uh, we're on the move, man. And you know what I think. God's going to change the world. He's going to start right here in Alma. And this is the epicenter. It's the epicenter of the world. Most people don't realize that, but it's the truth. So let's prepare our hearts for what God has for us because He's going to use us in a mighty way and He wants to change us before He uses us, which is a good thing. Let's prepare our hearts. company, I'd encourage you to say hi to the college kids that are blessing us with their presence today that may not be around much over the next few months, so let's be sure and tell them hi. And Audrey Hedrick, she tells me she's back permanently, so sure greet her and, and welcome her back. If you are able, please stand and we'll have the call of worship this morning. How about we start this way? God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. We are here to worship a remarkable God. The love of God welcomes us. The grace of Christ awaits us. The joy of the Spirit enfolds us. Don't come as slaves. Come as the truly free. Don't come as petitioners. Come as those who are already heard. Don't come as interlopers. Come as invited guests. Don't come as the outsiders. Come as much wanted children. The love of God enfolds us. The grace of Christ redeems us. The joy of the Spirit uplifts us. Come as the joyful. Come as the eager. Come as the thankful. Come as the recipients of amazing grace. The love of God overflows our hearts. The grace of Christ liberates our spirits. The joy of the Spirit sings in our minds. Amen. 
on worship choruses this morning. That makes you want to run down the aisle and shout, doesn't it? Yeah, very good. Um, welcome to Alney. It's so good to see you. We are always thankful that you choose to be here with us because we know that you can choose to be any place else, in bed, fishing, although I don't know, but um, you can be somewhere else, and we just are thankful that you've chosen to be here. And because of that, we hope that you're blessed throughout the week. From Isaiah 12, 4 through 6. In that day, you will say, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known among the nations what he has done, and proclaim his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done more in his name. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you.
Read your name.
Dear Lord, we thank you so much that you even bother to lend an ear and listening, to listen to us, to sinners. People who are nobodies except for you, Lord, that you sent Jesus to save us. And we thank you, Lord, so much for that gift. And you give us blessings and gifts every day that we can be here, that we have a church family that stands behind us and that we can be a part of. This day, Lord, the rain, the sunshine, the ability to work, the ability to play, to be able to go to school. Lord, there are so many gifts that, that we owe you for and we thank you for and we could never repay you for. And you are so gracious, Lord, so gracious that you give everything just out of the goodness of your heart and your love for us that you created us to be yours, Lord. And so we thank you for that. And we ask you now, Lord, that your blessing would be on this worship service, that your spirit, your Holy Spirit, would be among us, would speak to us, just open our minds and our hearts to your word, to your love, to what is offered here for us today, Lord. And just thank you so much for letting us be a part of it. It's in your name that we pray, Lord. Amen. And the kids can come forward for the children's moments. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. 
when you become a believer, what do you think your main job is? When you become a Christian, when you become a believer, somebody who knows Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, what do you think your job is from that point on? What do you think God asks you to do? Well, you, you, he does give you a job to work at, but what do you think he wants you to do every single day? Well, there's something else he wants you to do. Keep going. Your main job. Well, that's what you've already done. You've already done the believing part. Now what do you think he wants you to do? Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in the house. Spoke the word of the Lord. Where does the word of the Lord come from? The Bible. The Bible. And how do people get to know about the Bible? How do they get to know Jesus? What if they don't know how to read the Bible or they don't have a Bible? How are they going to get to know about Jesus? Oh, oh what? People can tell them. That's exactly right. That's the main job, Noah. When you become a believer, your main job is to tell others about Jesus Christ. Why? Why bother telling other people about Jesus? They can start believing in him too. Why is that a good thing? So they can go to heaven. There really is a hell, isn't there, Brody? Yeah. yeah. We wouldn't need heaven if there wasn't a hell. So our main job is to tell others about Jesus Christ. And just as that marble hit those other marbles, that other person went off and told somebody else. Did you see that? That marble came along, hit some, or talked to somebody about Jesus. Somebody else heard about it, and they went off and told somebody else. All right? So we need to tell others about Jesus Christ. Always, always, always. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to come to church. I thank you for these children. I thank you for the parents who bring them, Lord, because this is our generation coming up. Um, these are our leaders, and we just ask, Lord, that you would help us to help them to become fully equipped in order to um, serve you and to let others know about you and to create a new, leaders, a new generation of leaders. We ask that you do this throughout the service. Help us to keep our ears and eyes open to what you would have to say to us in children's church and in Sunday school and to take it back with us as we go throughout our week. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Mr. Brogan, did you put the piano bench back for me, Thank you. You help? Okay. Thank you, Clayton. We did. Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to give back and the many blessings that you give to us each week and every day. And we do this with joyful hearts, Lord, in your name. Amen.
experience. Lord, we come to you. First of all, we just thank you for the rain that we've gotten this week. Uh, that has truly been a blessing. We've been praying, and our faith is in you. You are faithful. Your word says that you not only hear, but you answer. In John's first epistle, and Lord, we just thank you for the answer to prayer. We pray and ask that you would continue to bless us with the outpouring of water from the heavens. Lord, we just thank you for that. We, we pause a moment, not taking for granted your faithfulness, but praising you for it. And Lord, uh, we pray and ask that you would just move our hearts closer to you. Lord, I pray and ask that you would draw us near to you. There's an overwhelming sense, at least within me, that something's coming. Lord, uh, revival, that's what I pray for. Challenge and battle, certainly the enemy knows how to do that. Lord, we pray and ask that you would prepare our hearts and our lives for whatever lies ahead. And Lord, that we would truly cast our trust and our faith in you. And Lord, we have heard so many requests this morning. Many are in the realm of physical need, surgeries that are upcoming, or situations that could have easily have been fatal, but you, the great physician, stretch forth your hand and do what you do. You touch us. And Lord, I pray and ask that each of these situations that have been mentioned here today, that you would minister to the physical need, yes. But Lord, there is a spiritual and emotional need that always accompanies. Lord, the stress of being physically down It seems as though the enemy will zero in on that and cause us grief and anxiety. And I pray and ask that you would just help us to release those things to you. Lord, in each and every one of our lives here, my life, each one sitting here in the sanctuary, Lord, Help us to be able to cast our cares upon you, fully knowing that you care for us. And Lord, I pray and ask that the needs that have been mentioned here this morning, that you, through your Holy Spirit, would minister the miraculous is the neighborhood that you live in. It's an unknown destination for many of us. Our faith gets challenged each and every time we approach your throne and, and we bring these things before you. The enemy tries to put doubt out there for us to grab hold of. But Lord, help us to, re to remain steadfast in our faith and our trust in you, knowing that you hear and answer our prayers and Lord that you're going to answer them in such a way that our faith is increased and honor and glory is brought to your name Lord I pray and ask that you would lift each and every one of these and Lord for those that need a touch 
to their heart that need to have that warmth of your Holy Spirit calling them to faith and trust in you. For those who need to be saved, Lord, we pray and ask that your Holy Spirit would be the hound of heaven and that you, through his word, would be relentless in pursuing your soul. Lord, we pray that in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we lift these that have been mentioned here today before your throne of mercy and grace and ask that in the name of Jesus they would be healed. And we'll be quick to give you praise as the reports come back. Now we ask you to be with us throughout the rest of the service. Lord, open our hearts and minds to the truth of your word. And Lord, we ask that you would do a new thing in us. Light a fire, fresh and new. Allow your Holy Spirit to blow across the flames and the embers of our lives and consume us with your Holy Spirit. We ask that also in the name of Jesus. As we go throughout the week, may we, as Brenda taught the children, be witnesses to what you have done in our life to those around us. May we invite people to know you. Our job is just to introduce we don't save anybody. Our job is just to introduce them to the one who can mention. So help us not to be afraid to invite people to meet you. Now we ask that you would help us to pray as you taught the disciples to pray. Our Father, you are in heaven. How be thy name? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We have a session this morning. share a little something that whenever I find out I've got a special coming, I start praying about this. And this verse from the Bible came up to me, and I think I know why. Um, years ago, I sang this song with a trio, and it didn't mean much to me then, but it does now. And I'm going to tell you what the verse is. It's Second Chronicles 7.14. It's, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. I think this is all going together today with what Lucas had to say and what Brenda had to say. And I pray cheerful hearts of indigenous. Um, but I want you to listen to this. It's sung by the Imperials, by the way. <laughs> Maybe one of them, I think.
the promise found in the scriptures for you and for his church. This nation has drifted so far from the faith of our fathers that we have charted a dangerous course away from our dependence on him. Humble repentance is our only hope. When we pray and seek God's face, we shall see the salvation of God displayed in this promise. I have a little story I wanted to share, just something that came on my heart this morning, and since it did, I guess I will share it. I'm sure Pastor Jeff didn't plan to speak very long this morning anyway. <laughs> no, I got a short message. It's only 11 pages. <laughs> okay. uh, it's just about um, one of my nieces who recently got baptized, and she's in her 20s. She has three little children, and she's been seeking Christ for a little while now. She's a new believer, and decided she wanted to get baptized and she told me that she was trying to get ready for that like she was reading her bible more and she was i guess examining her behaviors and trying to behave better and i know i've had experiences with other people who have said the same thing well i'm just not ready to be baptized i'm you know people feel like they have to get perfect before they can be baptized and that is so far from the truth god wants you to come and ask you into your life right now as you are and then he will help you with all that work because we all need to do it and that's what pastor jeff has been talking to us about in this series he's doing about obedience but it doesn't start there it starts with just giving our hearts to christ and saying hey we want you to help us we want to be better so uh the scripture this morning if you could please stand in honor of god's word Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. You want me to read that one? It's a little different than mine. I'm reading from NIV. Do you want me to just read that? Read whatever you're talking about. Oh, there we go. No, it's the same. Never mind. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed in the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. Your basket and your kneading trough will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but flee from you in seven. The Lord will send a blessing on your barns and on everything you put your hand to. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he's giving you. 
The Lord will establish you as his holy people, as he promised you on oath. On oath, if you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in obedience to him, then all the peoples on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they will fear you. The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock, and the crops of your ground, in the land he swore to your ancestors to give you. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season, and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. The Lord will make you the head, not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you this day, and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top, never at the bottom. Do not turn aside from any of the commands I give you today, to the right or to the left, following other gods and serving them. And all God's people said. Start off by saying, um, it's wet out there, not much you can do anyway. It's not like you can go home and mow the lawn. So, um, interesting, we continue our look last week. This idea of a promise, the if then. You know, we just saw a video that said, If my people which shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from them. My ears will be attentive. And for some reason, it seems as though the modern church and modern culture is trying to wipe away consequences for disobedience. Not, not, you know, we all experience the consequences of bad choices. (coughs) Making, Making a wrong choice is different from making a bad choice. You know, there... There were times in our past when I made investments based on information that was given to me, and it was a wrong choice. It doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad choice. It was just wrong. It just had a bad outcome, a wrong outcome, because that's not what was presented to me. You ever been there? There are times when you go to the restaurant, you sit down, and you have a, a supper. This week, before we got our refrigerator, we've been eating out more than we usually do. And so I picked Dawn up from work on Tuesday, and we went to Genova's. I, I, fortunately, I had my cell phone with me. Because when I go to an Italian restaurant, I want to hear Dean Martin telling you. <laughs> you cannot have you cannot have be in an Italian restaurant and not have when the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's some more. So we sat there for a minute and I said, Are they gonna play music? No. I don't think so. Don looks around, you know. She's become like the contractor. She looks around. They don't have speakers. Pulled my cell phone out. Pandora. Dean Martin. Set it on the table. Turned it up. We had Dean Martin. Little Frank. I felt like I was in an Italian restaurant. They brought us the menu. She ordered the sampler. I ordered the veal, Francesca, and we ate. Mine was really good. Hers, it was okay. She said it was okay. I said, no, it's okay. It wasn't that it was a bad choice for her. It was just not the right choice. Now, some of you that really like spinach, you would have probably liked it. She gave me a bite. I said, it tastes good. A lot of spinach. <laughs> Felt like Popeye. <laughs> if you're watching on TV and you like Genovas, please, I'm not 
discrediting the restaurant. Great food. Great food. Great service. It's just when you make that choice, you've all been in a restaurant, you've opened the menu, you've made a choice, and it comes, and eh, it's good, it fills you up, but it's not what you had in your mind. You had presupposed what it might be like. Right? That's just like when you, you don't even have to go to a nice sit-down restaurant like that. You can go to McDonald's and you look up there on that screen and boy, that Big Mac looks good. You open yours up when you get it at the table and what happened? <laughs> it don't look like the picture. They created in your mind a presupposition of what it is supposed to look like. But you've already paid for it, so you eat it anyway. I don't know if anybody's gone up to the counter and said, listen, I'd like to return this. It does not look like that picture. <laughs> you are more than welcome to try. Let me know how that goes for you. I am not beyond stealing people's tactics in restaurants, okay? So, but that those aren't bad decisions. They're wrong decisions. A bad decision is... Hey, listen, we're going we're gonna to go out and we're going to just get plastered and wasted and have fun. That's why my mom, when I was a teenager, on Friday night, I don't know how it is nowadays, but when I was a teenager, every Friday night, usually every Saturday night, we did something. You either had a date or you went out with a group of your friends and you hung out. Back then, there were many a Saturday night that a bunch of us, Gary, me, Gary, and a bunch of our other friends, would go down to the Tasty Freeze at a place called Cedar Street, and we'd get us an ice cream cone, we'd sit on the hood of the car with the boom box. That was for, that rap music really wasn't in, man. It was 70s rock. We'd get a little journey going. When I was with my family, it was country music when I was with my friends because they didn't like country music too much. We listened to Journey. We listened to Boston. You know, to, you guys were teenagers. And we hung out. Every time, we just watched people. That's what you did. If, if one of the people that came and, and hung out with us would have said, hey, let's go, let's go do something. Let's be bad. You say, well, there's not people like that in this world. Yeah, there are. I've met them. You are at a crossroads. It wouldn't be a wrong decision if you made a decision to go with them and be bad, it would be a bad decision. Because the intent is to be bad. No one intentionally goes out to be wrong. When I was in school, math and science were not my forte. Just be honest with you. I still studied because I didn't want to be wrong. Now that didn't sometimes change the outcome because I was still wrong. But I tried. And teachers knew that. Came to history class. I passed the history final in my junior year. Never opened the book. Passed it, didn't miss one. Got 100%. Answer every question right. I felt real good about myself that day. Go and take the math final. Mm -hmm. Lord, what are you going to do with me in this life? That's a, because I, I did. There were wrong answers. Bad decisions and wrong decisions are two different things. And when 
the intent is to be bad, you are at a crossroads. And that is what Deuteronomy chapter 28 is really all about. In this passage, you'll see that, that the, the first uh, 13 or so verses are dealing with the good. God will bless us if, if you diligently obey my commands. And that rubs the 21st century believer the wrong way because we have been so indoctrinated by our culture that to be commanded something is bad. My mother always said on Friday and Saturday night when I was going to go out, whether it was on a date or with my friends, have fun, but don't have too much fun. Be good. There were other things that she would say, depending on what mood she was in. Don't sully our name. There are things that are a result of being able to understand the imperatives of God. He commands certain things of us because He loves us. Not because He's bossy, but because He loves us. And you read on into Deuteronomy. Not a lot of people like to read Deuteronomy. When you pick the books of the Bible that you want to study in your own time, Deuteronomy isn't at the top of the list. Neither is Leviticus. But the reality of it is, is that when Moses came down from the mountain, and we've all seen Charlton Heston in his role depicting Moses, he comes down from the mountain and he's got the Ten Commandments. Everything in Leviticus, the Ten Commandments sum up everything in Leviticus. You can read Leviticus, you can study Leviticus, and here is an interesting study. If you want to make Leviticus interesting for you, study Leviticus through the lens of the Ten Commandments. Because everything in Leviticus falls under. When you get into all of the different laws and regulations, everything falls under the Ten Commandments. And so God gives us commands. If we diligently obey all that He has commanded us, then this will happen. And didn't you love those blessings? When Dawn read the blessings, don't you? You're, you're blessed in the city. Woo! Anybody here like to be blessed in the city? It's okay to admit that. I need God's blessings when I go to the city because they are a lot of times not prepared for somebody coming out of the country. They need preparation. I need blessing. A friend tried to get me to move to uh, big city. Big city. I visited Chicago. Somebody said, wouldn't you love to live here? <laughs> I said, you cannot kick rabbits out of all this concrete. I'm just telling you. <laughs> But let me sum it up here. Deuteronomy 28. You get down to the, to the last part. After the blessings come the curses. The results of disobedience. And what God is really doing here through Moses is He is instructing us. He is giving us, He's boiling it down to the very simplest of terms for us. It's about a choice. <coughs> It's not about choices. It's about a choice. You see, a lot of people get all Twitter-pated when, when they try to follow God and they're trying to obey all of these uh, regulations. They think they've got to have everything just right. Just like Don said, when there are some people who struggle. Listen, it, the, the old hymn that we sang when I was a kid growing up, just as I am, 
Come to God just as you are with a true and sincere heart of allowing Him to change you. Doesn't matter what you're like now, He will change you into what He created you to be. And so we sang the hymn, Just As I Am, without one plea. But that, that was what should be. And you come forward and you give your heart to Christ with all your foibles, all of your shortcomings, all of your sin, all of your disobedience, all of the bad choices that you've made. You give those to, to God. You give, you surrender your heart to Jesus Christ and He changes you. If it wasn't that way, that hymn would be sung just as I ought to be. But that's not what God wants. He wants us to come to Him just as we are. Because we can never be what He created us to be without Him at the steering wheel driving our life. <coughs> we'll never be what He created us to be without Him, the designer, the architect of our soul, still mapping out. His purpose in our spirit. But what he does is, in Deuteronomy 28, is he boils it down and he basically tells the, the children of Israel, listen, this is what happens when you make the right choice, the good choice, the proper choice. This is what happens when you make the bad choices. And so it's about choice. That is not something that we like to hear about. Because we want all of our choices to have good results, even the bad ones. Guy goes in, robs a bank, gets caught, they interview him on the news. As my parents made me do it. I wasn't hugged enough as a child. I have to I have to be honest with you, that doesn't wash with me. And this is not an indictment upon my father, but I gotta tell you, I can't remember being hugged by my dad. That is not who he was. If I based all the decisions on my life based on how many hugs my dad gave me, whew, I'd be up a creek. I cannot blame other people for the choices that I make. The good, the bad, the right, the wrong. I have to own those. Some choices I've made in my life, I wish I had. But God in this chapter is all about choices. And there are consequences to willfully disobeying what we know God wants us to do. That is where if we diligently seek the commands that He puts forth, what are the commands of God? Just starting off, I'm not asking you to recite the, the book of Leviticus. I'm not asking you to give me every jot and tittle of Christianity. I am asking you to give me what are the basic known commands of God. Love God. Jesus said they sum it up in what? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength. Strength. And your neighbor is yourself. Now, these, before Jesus summed it up, there were ten. I'll, give you, I'll just give you a hint on this quiz. There were ten. And those ten commands, just like I said, the book of Leviticus expounds. You can study the book of Leviticus looking through, studying it through the lens of the Ten Commandments. But you can also look at all of Christianity through the lens or the summary that Jesus gives because the Ten Commandments are summarized, He says, in His statement. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength, and your neighbor as yourself. 
So what? Stay with me for a second. I'm running on just a little bit of sleep. I woke up 3.30 this morning. So if I seem a little, that's okay. But what God has done is He keeps boiling it down so that we can now understand it. He starts off with Ten Commandments. He gives them the details of the Ten Commandments, the full details in the book of Leviticus. Then He says in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, He says, listen, I'll boil it down even more. I will bless you if you're obedient. I will not bless you if you're disobedient. The, you got it. And the it's children of Israel are going, yeah, we got it. Woo, yeah, we're with you, God. And he realizes, hey, you, get you ever talk to somebody like that? You explain it? Let me explain this to you. You ever tell, use those words? Let me, let me just boil it down. I'll explain it in easy terms if you understand. And you explain it in easy terms they understand. You look at them and they go, Huh? Do you understand what I'm saying? Huh? Let me boil it down even further. Okay. You try to boil it down again, and you say, you got it? Huh? And they walk away, and you walk away, and you go, they didn't get it. <laughs> and so, listen. You, if you want to know, if you read through the, the second part, we're going to get to it more in detail next week. But if you read through the second part, there's some curses and some curses. In that curse, there is a prophetic word there. There is a prophecy that is presented in those curses. Just like it is prophetic in the blessings. But in the curses, it says that in the, in the blessings, it says you will be blessed by the what? In the fruit of your womb. On the night. You prosper. Most of us today, when we have our children, it is not, we don't think of it as prosperity. <laughs> you guys just bought all your back to school stuff, your parents. What did it cost you? Two, three hundred bucks? That's not prosperity. Back in those days, though, children, the more children you had, what? The more labor you had. And it wasn't like they were slaves. They worked together. Just like some of the farmers, ranchers here today. They worked together. And, uh, and they passed it on to their children. It's called a legacy. It's called an inheritance. That's what they did back then. If I had 12 sons, just like uh, Isaac, uh, or Jacob, I mean. Uh, you have 12 sons. You got 12 hard workers. And they begin to have sons. And then it just exponentially takes off. Pretty soon you've got an empire. And when you say the back 40 needs to be planted, that was a whole different process than we have today. And he says, you will prosper from the fruit of your womb. You will have children. That will, that, that's prosperity to them. Now if you read on down, it talks about the, what happens and they actually, he says, if you disobey me, calamity will come to you in such a way that you, the, you will consume the bodies of your children. And if you don't believe that's happened, read 2 Kings chapter 6. Right around verse, start right around verse 24. The king is walking along the wall. The woman comes up to him and she's crying and she says, listen, O king, Things are, and there's besieged. They're surrounded by Syria, an army. And she comes up, runs up to the king in tears, and she says, Oh, king, do something. A woman approached me, and she said, Let us eat your child today, and tomorrow we will eat my child. And so we ate my child, and then she went and hid hers. Does that sound like a good thing? Does that sound like blessing? That is the reason. Listen, we say, well, nah, 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 we wouldn't do that today. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's starvation around the world. And even in our own nation, how many millions do we put to death each year through abortion?
say, Pastor Jeff, you shouldn't get political. It has nothing to do with politics. It has everything to do with Scripture. Psalm writer says, "Happy, is, blessed are you from the fruit of your womb. Happy is the man who's quivered." <coughs> it doesn't say how inconvenient they are. It doesn't say if you're ready for it. Listen, I have a simple, simple message for young men and young women. You don't want to be a parent. Don't. But don't take. Don't take the consequences of a bad decision out on an innocent life. So don't tell me that they were barbaric back then. Barbarism just puts on a whole new suit in the 21st century. The reality of it is, is that God calls you and I to make a choice. We're either going to be obedient or we're going to be disobedient. We're either going to go His way or we're going to go our own way. We're either going to follow His Word or we're going to follow the world. We are either going to allow culture to dictate our actions, our attitudes, or we're going to let the Holy Spirit. I have to tell you, I, I'm not just operating on a little few hours of sleep from last night. I have been losing sleep all this week, waking up all hours of the morning and praying desperately to God because there's something, when I study this stuff, there's something that says to my spirit from the Spirit of God that there is something on its way. I don't know what it is, but I don't want to be a part of it. It is an ominous feeling A few weeks ago, I said we are culpable enough when we allow things to take place that shouldn't take place. I just mentioned about abortion. And we are culpable in that as well. Myself included. When I don't raise a stink and I don't raise a fuss, that my dollars go to support that. Do you see how intricate life gets? God calls you and I to be a shining light in a dark world. And there are times when I find myself in a position that I do not know what to do because the world around me has set the parameters and the dictates. And the only thing I know to do is to go to prayer. I see my grandsons get up from children's moments. Wes this morning with his piece of licorice in his hand and he skips and hops back heading down to the nursery. The children heading over into children's church. And I begin to think in my mind, what are they facing? What world will they face? Statistic this week <coughs> said 70... All... Let me get my thoughts here. All kids that go to college, doesn't matter where, across the United States, all kids in colleges and universities that go there have a 70% chance of walking away from their faith. Every kid that goes to the university or college has a 70% chance of walking away from their faith. And we have trouble getting out of bed on Sunday morning getting them out of bed on Sunday morning and bringing them to church because we think we've done a good enough job. I did not do a good enough job. 
My wife did a great, better job than I did. But still, if you're a parent, you can never do enough to let your children know. Even if they're her age, she needs to hear me continually say, follow God, trust in Him, walk in His ways. Life gets tough. John Wayne, there's a quote out there, John Wayne said, life's tough, it's tougher when you're stupid. <laughs> Let me spiritualize that. Life is tough, it's tougher when you walk it without Jesus Christ. Because to live life without Jesus, to go back to John, it's stupid best thing that you and I can do is give our hearts fully to Jesus Christ and to dedicate ourselves to being obedient to His Word. There are consequences to our choices. God keeps boiling it down so that we understand this is the choice. Joshua summed it up best. You've heard me quote it several times in the last month. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He tells the children of Israel, choose. You can choose. It's a choice. You can follow the gods of the lands that you have invaded, or you can follow the Lord God Almighty. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What choice have you made today? What choice have you made today? And you say, well, <laughs> Pastor Jeff, I've been a Christian. I follow Jesus. Are you engaged? Are you engaged in living the Christian life 24-7? Seven days a week. 365 days a year. Have you engaged in that? Stand. I apologize for the time. Because I know that the children's church workers are probably going crazy. <laughs> call that God calls ministers to is not to be time conscious, but to be eternal truth conscious. And I would have done you a disservice today if I have not given you what God lays upon my heart. There are times it's a burden that I don't want to bear alone, so I can share it with you. We have a task to do, people. We have a world to change. Epicenter is on me. It will ripple out from here if we trust and obey. Father, I thank you for your word. It truly is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It will illuminate where we're at and it will shine out so that we can see where we need to go. Lord, I pray and ask that we would hide Your Word in our heart that we might not sin against You. That's what Your Word says. And so, Lord, there are many ways in which we can drink in Your Word. We can read it. We can listen to it. Lord, we can sing it. We can surround ourselves with the things that are going to draw us closer to You. But most of all, we can each and every day invite Your Spirit to fill us fresh and anew. Lord, with Your holy presence, 
that you would guide our footsteps, that you would impart to us, as James says, wisdom. For you give wisdom when we ask. And so I pray that you would transform us, transform me even now, into something different than I am today. May I be different tomorrow. Lord, give me a hunger for Your truth. Give me a hunger for Your Word. Give me a hunger for Your presence. And Lord, I pray that is the prayer of each one going up out of this sanctuary today. Help us not to be satisfied until we've been satisfied by Your Holy Spirit. And Lord, help us to see with Your eyes the world in which we live. Help us to have compassion where compassion is needed. Help us to take a stand where a stand is needed to be taken. Do not let us shrink from the enemy, but let us go forth in the power of Your presence with Your holy arm protecting us. And Lord, I pray and ask that You would raise us up to be an army that would change the world right here from all in Kansas. May history look back and see a committed group of followers and believers who loved you enough to be obedient and to love others into the kingdom. Thank you for that privilege in Christ's name and heaven. And our final hymn is Trust and Obey. It's number 571 in your hymnal. If you need to. upon you and may you walk in the trust and the obedience of the Lord this week. All God's people said Amen. Amen.